Hi friends and subscribers, a warm welcome back to my YouTube channel. Daniel Rosal here bringing you this video from Jerusalem City Centre tonight, the third night of Hanukkah in the year 5783 or in the uh, Jewish calendar it is the year 5784 and I've just woken up from a lovely delightful Shabbat nap and now it's no longer Shabbat. Uh, the best way to end Shabbat or, uh, or or so I think. So I came across this article today from a guy called Walt, Walter Bingham um, and I wanted to read out this article for the benefit of folks who prefer to digest soulful long-form content in the medium of uh, audio or through video. Walter Bingham is no ordinary writer. He is the world's oldest active journalist. This man is 99 years old and he's going to be turning 100 uh, in January. And he's originally a British guy and he writes commentary pieces. And this one I thought was very relevant because among the kind of sea tide of commentary uh, that is going out there at the moment, this one uh, reflects a minority opinion, probably, I would guess, a contrarian opinion, but one that I personally espouse myself, my own opinion, although this is not going to be popular with uh, many people, including my own family members who live in the Jewish diaspora. I think the Jewish diaspora has no future. And I think that current events where we're seeing Jewish communities on the over the world come under threat bears that out. He also alludes to something interesting in this article whereby, you know, when I've articulated this opinion to my own family members, they've said, well, Israel needs the Jewish diaspora. And that sounds right, but look at that under the surface and question whether militarily, financially, that's actually the case anymore. I don't believe it's the case. And I think I will do a, another video uh, regarding that question, does Israel need the Jewish diaspora or can a successful, thriving, strong Jewish state exist without the Jewish diaspora, uh, which is my contention. So I think that's for another video and perhaps I'll find uh, an expert to interview about that. If you happen to be that expert uh, and have some insight, feel free to get in touch. But today we're going to read Walter Bingham's article. And just before I get into starting to uh, read this article, I just wanted to say that my Dormant podcast has been revived because this form of content I realize is less useful from a video standpoint. So if you do prefer to get your content or, uh, you know, if you if this type of content interests you more, I'll be syndicating relevant pieces over to the podcast. I'll leave a link in the description, but it's called the Daniel Rosal podcast and it can be found on Spotify and, uh, you know, all the other platforms. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's get into this Article, Diaspora's, Diaspora Jury's Days Are Over, All Jews Must Move to Israel for Their Safety. An opinion piece in the Jerusalem Post on the 9th of December, which is dated today. Subtitle, The Golden Age for British Jews, I believe for Jews in the entire diaspora, is over. Consider your children's, children's future. Relocate to Israel, the home for all Jews. Very powerful. Um, I might not read this exactly verbatim. I might skip over some pieces, but I'll generally read most of it. We, mar we mourn our brave soldiers who fell in the battle to defeat an enemy who were determined to destroy the state of Israel and brutally kill every Jew in their path. We feel the pain of the families and we pray that the Almighty may comfort them among all the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. With God's help, we shall smite the enemy and free the hostages. We are now experiencing one of the worst wars since our War of Independence in 1948. If you think that I am stating the obvious, then please remember that for a young country like ours, to have to defend our existence once again is a major event that affects every citizen of Israel, in fact every Jew in the world. Regular listeners to my radio programs will recall the many occasions on which I stressed that we are living in a period that is equivalent to the mid-1930s in Germany when Jews had to keep a very low profile for fear of being attacked and when groups of Nazis went hunting for Jews. I was not believed, but it happened again. Having lived in Germany during those years, I have experienced it all before. The daily increasing attacks on us, Jews and our property, to help to put an end to such anti-Semitic outrages, I fought the Nazis as a British soldier, soldier for four years, convinced that after the war, the slogan, never again, had real meaning. But I soon realised that anti-Semitism is used as the panacea to take the people's mind off all problems that occur around the world, whether they be economic or political. 
I am old enough to recognize the signs of things to come and was very often accused of exaggerating when I warned about growing physical anti-Semitism. I was told, and here's where I love, uh, I fell in love with this article because it resonates with me and my own experience. I was told that the future for Jews in the world is secure and that Israel needs a strong Jewish diaspora. Oh, really? In the US, Jews constitute 2.4% of the population. Yet, as FBI Director Christopher Wray said recently, 60% of all religious-based hate crimes have targeted Jewish people. Just look at what happened at the airport in the Russian Republic of Dagestan, or in Paris, where Jewish homes were daubed with stars of Israel and their cars were vandalized. French Jews are removing the mezuzot from their front doors for fear of being identified as Jews. In Vienna, the Jewish cemetery was vandalized and set on fire. Did you see how many hundreds of thousands marched in Madrid, Paris, London, New York, and many smaller centres around the world, calling death to Jews? It's 1938 all over again. The world was silent then, and it is silent now. The marches in support of Palestine and Hamas are driven by ignorance. What more evidence is needed than seeing rainbow flags being waved among those who shout, Free Palestine? Homosexuality is a criminal offence in Muslim-controlled areas, so they effectively vote for their own destruction. It is evident that when the international reporters are continu- it is evident that when the international reporters are continually reinforcing the concept of occupied Palestinian land and stress the difficult conditions of the Gazan population, clearly brought about by their Hamas rulers, those, report- those reporters not only contribute to the ignorance of the demonstrating masses but also show their own lack of knowledge. The media bosses would do well to educate their young journalists, and I guess for this guy at 99, almost everyone else is young to some extent. The media bosses would do well to educate their young journalists about the history of the area to which they assign them, so that they do not infuse what should be factual reports with their ignorant and biased views. There is scant mention in their dispatches of the IDF's humanitarian actions to supply incubators for the enemy's bases or medications for their hospitals, all while engaged in heavy fighting. We didn't hear a war word about the civilians from Gaza who followed the terrorists into the villages to loot, or that War Cabinet Minister Benny Gantz disclosed that photographs working with AP, CNN, New York Times and Reuters were embedded with Hamas terrorists as they were butchering innocent Israelis on October 7th. This is a sickening disclosure that requires the outrage and strongest condemnation of those media organisations and by the international community. It means, in fact, that they had advance notice of intended atrocities and should be judged accordingly. The new buzzword used by our so-called friends is proportionality. I suppose they mean that we should suffer the atrocities and respond as usual by sending a bomb or two to destroy a building already evacuated by Hamas. Well, this time they have miscalculated. Israel will no longer be the one who is sacrificed on the altar of humanitarian response. Anyway, the term proportionality means exactly the opposite from how it's being used. It means in proportion to that which the enemy did. It means ein tahat ein, an eye for an eye, respond equivalently to their actions. Notes were found on the terrorists that the IDF showed on CBS TV. They contained an order to kill Jews because they are a plaque, or similar words, a plague, or similar words, that can only be cured by cutting off their heads and tearing out their hearts and lives. Go and fight, the nose concluded. Therefore, every Hamas terrorist must and will be killed. We will not lower ourselves to their inhumane ways and gouge out their eyes or cut up their bodies. In fact, whereas the Arab terrorists mutilate Jewish bodies, the Israeli humanitarian organisation Zaka places even dead terrorists into body bags. Not that I would recommend. Musab Hassan Yusuf, the son of a Hamas leader, was more aware of the truth than the international press and TV when he said in his video on YouTube, There is a movement in the West, angry in the street, protesting. Some call themselves pro-Palestine, some call themselves free Palestine, others shout, end occupation. What occupation are you talking about? Do you mean in Israel and give Hamas what they want? Weaponry, territory, army so that they can mess more with the global security. Are you totally blind? How can't you see the things in common between the West and Israel? And how can't you see the brutality and the violence of the Hamas movement? You have nothing to do with Palestine. 
You're just inflicting hatred and emotional pain on the Jewish people as they mourn a modern day Holocaust. Do you think this is how you help Palestine? There is no such such thing as Palestine. Palestine what? Yasser Arafat's Palestine, PLO Palestine, the PA Palestine, Hamas Palestine, Islamic Jihad Palestine. What Palestine are you protesting for? You have no idea what you are talking about. I have the right to be emotional because I speak on behalf of the children as a Palestinian, as a child of the land. I qualify to talk about the subject, but you have never been there. You do not live the pain of that land. So what are you protesting against or about? What is your problem? Let me be clear. This war will go this war will go the way we want it to go. Your opinion doesn't matter, even if you were a majority. It's not your business. You can protest against your politicians in London and Paris, wherever you want. That's your business. But in the Middle East, we deal with business in the Middle Eastern style. We are going after Hamas leaders and will kill all of them and nobody can get in the way. Those are criminals. Those are terrorists. There's lots of blood on their hands. We are going to destroy Hamas infrastructure and that's the answer for their brutality. There is no way around it. This act of Hamas did not only bring the wrath of Israel against Gaza, it brought the wrath of God and you will see God in action. We are accused of perpetrating a Palestinian genocide. Yet their population has been increasing. Some 50% of the Gazan population are children under the age of 15. But for Hamas, dead Palestinian children are an integral part of their military st- strategy. So they inflate the numbers. To our fellow Jews in the diaspora, I speak from the heart based on my personal experience. Please learn from the past and wake up to reality. The current wave of anti-Semitism will not pass, but will get even more virulent. I can hear you are calling me a fearmonger. While just as events exonerated me from frequently comparing the present with the 1930s, so you will recall my words in times to come. Although we are in a difficult war with Hamas, have no illusions, we shall destroy them totally. Israel will emerge from the ordeal even stronger than before. Do you remember when, for political reasons, some reservists refused to report for duty? But when it matters, we are all as one. Therefore, only in Israel will you be safe from the ever-increasing anti-Semitism So don't get caught by surprise. Consider your children's future. Relocate to Israel, the home for all Jews. However, there are Jews who seem to believe that their children will have a better future among belligerent anti-Semites than in Israel. Here is a report from the Jewish News, an influential UK newspaper. British-born Richard Binstock, who moved to Israel in 2009, has come back to London with his Israeli wife and three children aged 7, 5 and 2. He felt forced to flee their home in Rishon Lezion, south of Tel Aviv, and is now not sure if they will ever move back to the Jewish state. He said, Leaving Israel was not an easy decision, but it was made easier when you have three young children living in the firing line. We don't know how safe it is in Israel anymore. It is true that Rishon Lezion, on the Israeli coastal strip, is the target of occasional rocket attacks, but to say that he lived in the firing line is a gross misrepresentation of the situation. He neither lived near the Gaza border, nor on Israel's border with Lebanon. How dare this family take their children back to London, where any identification of being Jewish can invite physical attack. Instead of abandoning the safe home that Israel gave him, he should see what all other Israeli citizens do for their country. It's been reported that 600 litres of mother's milk have been collected. My neighbours in their 80s are repeatedly staying four days a night in an army base to do whatever is required of them. US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken recently paid another visit to Israel, to influence the government's conduct of the war. But unlike on the previous occasions when he expressed his government's unqualified support, he pushed for a pause to promote negotiations to free the hostages. This is in effect a ceasefire, which benefits Hamas to regroup, rearm and reconsider their strategy, following their heavy losses. By remarkable contrast, the newly installed Speaker of the US House of Representatives, Mike Johnson, said, We will provide Israel with all the aid that it needs. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has repeatedly stated that Israel will not stop pursuing Hamas until they are totally defeated. It seems that the US is more concerned with its US citizens among the hostages than with the total defeat of the terror regime in Gaza. Blinken has already expressed his government's plan to install the PA, the Palestinian Authority, to rule over the whole of Gaza. A Jewish youth leader from the city of Malmo in Sweden has publicly stated that he is afraid of his life. Malmo, which is Sweden's third largest city, with a population of more than 345,000, houses more than 100,000 militant Muslims. Its Jewish community has declined amid frequent threatened attacks 
mostly by Muslims, from 1200 several years ago to an estimated 600 or fewer members today, and it is estimated that by 2029 it will cease to exist. Jews in the UK no longer feel safe, writes Manchester-born Rabbi Jonathan Lieberman from Netanya in the Jerusalem Post. He quotes Lord David Wolfson, a Jewish member of the House of Lords, who made a speech on the floor of the House, in which he stated that he was more fearful for the safety of his daughter on the London Underground, wearing a Magin David, than he was for his son, currently wearing the uniform of the IDF in the battlefield. The Daily Mail recently reported that a football match between a Jewish and a non-Jewish team of eight-year-olds had to be abandoned because some parents of the non-Jews of the non-Jewish children refused to let their parents play against refused to let their kids play against Jews, not Israelis. Imagine if that had been white kids refusing to play against blacks, what the reaction would have been. The golden age for British Jews, in fact I believe for Jews in the entire diaspora, is over. Here in Israel we are praying for the victory of the IDF and the total destruction of the Hamas dominated rule in Gaza. The writer, who was almost 100 years old, was an eyewitness to Nazi book burning in Kristallnacht. He is the world's oldest working journalist and radio host with Guinness World Records. So that's it, guys. I know that was a bit of a long article and certainly meandered. And I don't agree with every single word of it. Just want to point that out. But I do think it was a powerful piece, um, giving perhaps some uh, vigor and encouragement to those who, uh, like me and the author, share the view that what we're going, what we're seeing unfold in the world at the moment is pretty monumental, not just from the uh, from the standpoint of the security of the state of Israel, uh, but for the future of the Jewish people and the Jewish diaspora. Um, and uh, we are probably, I've seen many more articles in similar vein to this, and we'll probably see many more if, uh, God forbid, what the author predicts come true, and we see more and more anti-Semitism in the diaspora, we're going to see more and louder more and louder questions from uh, Jewish commentators as to uh, whether there is any future in the for Jews in the Jewish diaspora whatsoever. Thanks for watching today's video, and to get more videos, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.